But you guys, I got something really weird happening with the Falcon 210. Uh, so we're going to do a little black box log analysis here and see. Uh, you're going to find out while I do what the heck is going on here. I'm going to show you a video of the problem happening uh, in just a second, but I'll tell you. So I've upgraded the ESCs to BL Heli mm, 14.7. And I've, I'm on beta flight 3.0, so fine. And this copter would fly on clean flight 1.12. Um, so maybe a troubleshooting thing I need to do is flash it back to clean flight 1.12, and that would rule out the ES, it would rule out a beta flight as the issue. But since we've got black box, let's take a look at the black box anyway. So here's the problem uh, that it happens when I arm the copter and then I start to raise the throttle it, with a stick centered, the copter will kind of yaw to the left. So yeah, so it, it'll start to like yaw to the left. And anyway, even if I try and input controls to counteract the uncommanded motion, it just it, it isn't flat, it isn't right. And it won't take off either. It's not like, if, no matter how much I raise the throttle, it won't take off and hover, it just is weird. So let's take a look at the black box. And what I've got here is you can see the throttle right here down at the bottom. You can see I've just raised the throttle and I raised it very carefully because I didn't want the copter to flip out on me or do anything crazy. And as soon as it started to flip out, I lowered it again. So anytime you've got uncommanded motion, the first thing to do is to look at RC command, which is what these sticks up here are based on, and see if the motion is actually commanded. If you have a bad potentiometer or something like that, you could have an issue where the RC command is not centered even though you think you're not giving any input. So we'll take a look here at the trace and we can see, first of all, we can see that my roll and my pitch are very close to zero. Uh, this one is not quite zero. And we can see that my yaw is zero. This is going to be roll and this is pitch. So pitch is zero. Roll is slightly non-zero. I should probably fix that with trim, but it's not far off enough that it would cause this completely unflyable issue. Uh, I would just have to counteract that with the stick as soon as the copter got going. And yaw is at zero, and that's because I haven't raised the throttle above min check yet. Yaw is, if you have stick arming enabled, which I do on this particular copter, then yaw is always going to be zero when the, when the throttle is below min check. And that's so that when you go to disarm the copter, you don't act, you're not inputting a yaw movement. So then as I raise the throttle, you can see now yaw is at minus four, minus five, and roll is at minus six. And maybe that's the issue. Is the issue just that I don't have centered channels? If so, this is going to be a really short video. It doesn't feel like that's the issue because I input, I, in a later example, let's see if I can find it. I input, I like I try to make the copter fly and input counter motions with the sticks and it just is not flyable. See here, see here that I'm pushing yaw to the left, right? I'm pushing yaw, or to the right rather, sorry. I'm pushing yaw to the right to try and counteract this and and it still doesn't work. So here I'm 19 points to the right and the copter is still yawing to the left and then I drop the throttle to save it. And then I try again, I raise the throttle. Now I'm yawing hard to the right, see? Well, not very hard, but you know, that's, that's a fair amount of yaw. And again, I'm pushing more yaw, more yaw, and it's it's not working. Okay, so the issue here is not that RC command is causing the move to be commanded when I think it's not commanded. RC command is basically doing what it should be. The channels are not quite completely centered, but even when I push the stick the opposite direction, we still have the problem. In order to troubleshoot the problem, we have to work backwards from the symptom, which is that the motor's not spinning, and we have to work backwards to what causes the motors to spin faster or slower, and that is the PID loop, okay? Somewhere in the PID loop, there is some logic that is saying that the copter needs to roll left, pitch forward, and uh, yaw left, okay? And spinning this motor down is exactly what will accomplish that. So then what let's do is let's take a look at the PID sums and see if we can see what the PID sums do as we raise the motor, uh, the throttle. And this is relevant because you know, the PID sums are the sum of the P, the I, and the D for the three axes. So ultimately, it's the PID sum 
that gets sent to the mixer that gets sent to the motors okay so when we when we work backwards from the motor output the next step is the mixer which we don't have direct view of in black box and then the next step before that is the pid sum and then if we continue to work backwards let's say we see that the pitch pid sum goes negative we could say well is it the i term the, the d term or the p term that's making it go negative so working backwards we've got the motor the mixer the pid sum the PID sum is composed of the P, the I, and the D. And then if we were to continue working backwards, the next step after that would be the gyro and the RC input, or the RC command, which is what your sticks are doing. Uh, and those generate error, which is then used to calculate the PIDs, which are summed together to the PID sum, which gets fed to the mixer, which goes out to the motors. See, we can work it forward and back. So right now we're going to look at the PID sums and see what they do as I begin to raise the throttle. And as I raise the throttle above min check, and I know I'm above min check because I can see here that yaw is active, I can see that roll goes negative very quickly. Roll goes way negative. And yaw goes way negative. As I begin to raise the throttle a little bit more, yaw goes negative it sort of builds and becomes negative and you can see that happening in the video as well we can also see we've got some pretty heavy oscillations here it does make me wonder some pretty major oscillations i i don't want to put too much credence in this because i was raising the throttle with the copter sort of vibrating against the ground and you always get weird vibrations when you do that but that's some pretty big oscillations there but roll just immediately goes negative let's take a look at the example where i was giving those counter inputs and see what happens there and let me actually smooth this a little bit more so we can so we can stipulate we've got these vibrations right let's just smooth it a little more so we can see what's really going on now this is interesting because uh, the pitch pit sum has gone negative i see um, the motors are spinning i've i've begun to pitch back so the pitch pit sum here goes negative very shortly after I arm. And you might think that's a problem, but in fact, notice that that corresponds with an RC command input here. I've pitched back, and the reason for that is that this copter has 10 degrees of forward tilt on the motors, so I just want to hover and take off. I don't want to, I don't want to slide forward against the ground. I want to hover flat. And so I've input pitch, uh, uh, pitch back command, and the pitch pit sum goes negative. That's all completely correct and notice that the front two motors are spinning and the back two motors are idling now as I begin to raise the throttle you can see the throttle going up just carefully raising it you can see that the yaw pit sum goes negative very quickly here we are again yaw is going negative the other two are going negative as well. And even when I input right yaw, uh, negative yaw pit sum is left yaw. Uh, even when I input right yaw, you can see it doesn't really counteract that. It's very, very strange. So what we've got here is that the pit sums seem to be going negative, and it's, it's true for pitch and roll as well, although a little less so. What could make the pit sums go negative? Well, the first thing I think is that a persistent bias makes me think of the I term. So the P term and the D term will wiggle and jiggle about a certain center point. But you can see, if we zoom out a little here, that these lines are trending downward and if we look at the point about which these jiggles and wiggles here are the P and the D term, but if you see how these lines are trending downward around a sort of central point that descends, 
That's the I term. The I term is, is what compensates for persistent bias. So if we look at one of these, we should let's look at the I terms alone. We should see that the, I think we're going to see that the I terms go negative. Yes. So here, pitch goes negative, and that's because that's because I, I input a pitch back. But then as I raise the throttle, yaw goes strongly negative, and so does roll. So this explains why the copter is doing what it's doing, or does it? No, it doesn't. Because negative pitch is is pitched back and the copter is pitching forward and let's just confirm this for roll i can I'll never remember which way roll is so i'm going to bring rc command up here uh no i don't even need to do that hang on get rid of that go away can i do that like that no i can't um you can see that right right yaw is positive and the yaw here is negative. So the next question we want to ask is, is the PID loop commanding this to happen? And in which case, we might have a garbage in, garbage out scenario. The PID loop is getting bad data somehow, and it is commanding the wrong thing to happen. Or is the PID loop fighting this? Something physical in the real world is causing the copter to do something uh, unintentional and the PID loop is doing its best and failing to compensate for that. If we look at the yaw axis here, we can see that the yaw stick is deflected to the right, and we need to figure out whether right yaw corresponds with positive or negative numbers, because it actually isn't consistent. I think if I remember correctly, yaw and roll are reversed as to which is positive and which is negative. So hold on. Let's look at RC command. We can see that RC command is going negative. So we are commanding negative yaw, and the PID loop is showing negative yaw for the I term for, uh, for yaw. So the PID loop is trying to do what we're telling the copter to do. Okay, these two things agree. RC command and the PID loop, in this case the I term only, are in agreement. And we could also ask ourselves whether that is true for the PID sum. In fact, what let's do is let's bring up a custom graph. We'll go back and we'll look at the PID sum. No, not just for roll, all of them, please. And let's look and see if RC command, which is now on top, unfortunately, let's look and see if RC command is in agreement with what the PID loop is doing. So we can see here that yaw is negative and down here, the PID sum for yaw is negative. So the PID loop is trying to do the right thing. We can see here that pitch and roll are more or less centered. We're commanding nothing, and the PID sum is negative for them. So here, this tells us, this tells us that the PID loop is trying to do what it's told on yaw, but it's definitely fighting some external force on pitch and roll because we're commanding nothing, and the PID loop is saying, you know, roll to the right and pitch back. And the only reason it would be doing that would be if something external was causing the copter to roll to the left and pitch forward. The front left motor is spun down. The copter is being commanded to roll left and pitch forward. And that would suggest that the copter was in the real world pitching right and uh, pitching back and rolling right but it's definitely not. And here we can see that PID, the PID loop is saying, seriously, pitch backward. And the copter is pitching forward. Why isn't the PID loop trying harder to make the copter pitch backward? Why isn't it bringing up the rear motors? No, I mean, why isn't it bringing up the front motor? Why isn't it bringing up the front motor? It's because of yaw. The yaw is commanding right yaw and these two things are in conflict that's got to be what it is these two things are in conflict the yaw axis is commanding right yaw which requires this motor to spin down the pitch axis is commanding p 
pitch back, which requires this motor to spin up. And those two things together cannot be satisfied. So that's why we've got this conflict. So why does the yaw axis, what's going on on yaw? What let's do now is let's look at The yaw gyro and I guess RC command yaw, but it happens even when you don't input any motion. But all right, we'll leave yaw C com RC command in there and the PID sum on yaw. Why do the gyro is going positive? The yaw axis, copter thinks that it is yawing to the right, and so it's spinning this motor down. And then the whole copter can't take off or fly because this motor is constantly being forced to idle by the yaw axis, PID sum. And it's being forced to idle because the copter perceives the gyro is telling the copter that it is yawing to the right, and so and it's not being commanded to yaw to the right, and so. Uh, the yaw pit sum goes goes all the way to negative. And even when I command it to yaw to the right, say RC command goes negative, but it, not, that nothing can happen because this motor is already basically idling. So the copter is already trying as hard as it can to make this motor, to make the copter yaw to the right. So when I put in right yaw, the copter can't do anymore. Okay. So the question that we have to answer then is why does the pit, why does the gyro think that the copter is yawing to the right? And that is a question we will take up in part two of this video. For now, it's been a good uh, 16 minutes more or less of talking. I think that's more than enough for one go. Uh, we'll further investigate this mystery in the next part. Happy flying.